was going to block the network exactly in this region. Forearm is good, wrist and hand is good, shoulder is good, but middle of the upper extremity, I guess, I, I, I feel from my experience that it is a dual blocker. When supraclavicular, I must say, has come in vogue once again because we can now see the artery and the nerves around it. We don't have to walk on the first trip the way we did before. So hence, walking on the first trip, we don't have to damage the pleura and the lung, which we always thought we might. In children, it was extremely difficult even to comprehend that a supraclavicular block now can be given because the dome of the pleura was always a little higher up than the adults. But now that we can see all these structures, it's become very easier. We always see the brachial plexus lie very anterior and lateral to the subclavian artery with the first rib underneath. So there are only again three structures to remember. One is the rib, another is the subclavian artery, and the third is our brachial plexus living anterior and lateral to the brachial to the subclavian. So again three structures here. So let's see how to keep the probe to get those structures in view. You know, you need to hold the probe and look into the thorax. Now the probe is kept this way. There is a very subtle difference between the first picture and this. That's because now the probe is simply tilted. It's just a matter of angle. And as you see, even a child is extremely comfortable with these kind of blocks. So once you have kept your probe this way, what you see is the first trip, the subclavian artery, and the nerves here. Are we on the same page? Yes, should I go ahead? <clears throat> well, this is just a schematic diagram. This is the subclavian artery and the brachial plexus all around. And this is how it is seen under the color. This is how the needle is approached and then you spread the drug. Once you spread the drug, the nerves, they either move away from the drug. Once the drug starts streaking out of your needle, the nerve is going to go away because the drug has occupied some space and that itself is an excellent safety here, okay? Because there is a lot of space between the needle and the nerve. So it is protecting the nerve in fact. If you see the artery also moving away from the direction of the knee of the drug deposition, this just means that you are not in the artery. Alright? If you have aspirated, if you have not gotten blood and yet you inject but nothing happens on your screen, there are two possibilities. One is your plane is not right. Second is, you, for all you know, your tip might be in the artery because ultrasound does have certain artifacts. You might always not see the tip. So it's a very good habit to keep all these things in the mind. Once you see that the screen image is changing because of your drug deposition, exactly where you want it to change, in the direction in which you want it to change, you are extremely safe. So this is one 95, 92 year old man with a direction fraction of 95 and they get fractures here and there. You need to operate them, if not for functionality, but for pain. Alright, because a reduced fracture is obviously going to give less pain. So th this is how we get going with it. And in fact, me and Mamta were just discussing and uh, you know the pain of the, the process of giving the block itself might be really painful. All that we can do is if they can sleep at night with no complications, then they can sleep with our sedatives here and there a bit, which does not change much of their hemodynamics. So we still can give very, very la less dose of fentanyl and a liberal local so that they are very comfortable while you give the block. And the art is to keep on talking to them. Where they stay, who's waiting outside, where are your relatives? Because these are the people who are going to be wide awake with so many drapes on them. If it's a shoulder arthroscopy, a lot of water is going to, going to be thrown on them through the, through the equipment. So management of a patient under a solid regional block is also another aspect altogether. So this is how the surgery would go on. He would be sleeping fine 
and the surgeon would be working fine. And you would be having a cup of tea in peace data. Then intraclavicular drop, what is the data? Okay, okay. So this is how the probe is kept. The probe is going to show you the parasagittal view in the intraclavicular area. If you want to know some landmark on which the probe is kept, it's just kept below the coracoid to begin with, but now don't depend after begin uh, after you get the probe. Scan and don't stop scanning till you get the picture which you want to see. <coughs> Again, age is no bar to this block. After having kept this probe this way, what it shows is this. It shows the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. It shows the pectoralis major, the pectoralis minor, the axillary artery and the axillary vein. Or you can call it a subclavian artery which is about to be axillary artery. Then and then once you introduce the needle, this is what you are going to see. Let's go to the human body scan now. It is this way. The skin and the, you, you know, just do me a favor. Just put this up on this in your minds. It's the same. I'm just telling you the skin here and this is the actual scan here. The skin appearing is tissue, the pectoral is major, the pectoral is minor. This is the artery. Around the artery are our brachial plexus. Okay? They are cords here. And this is the needle which is come and lost itself. You're not going to see the needle in this particular block as crisply as you would see it in the neck because it's slightly deeper. This area is slightly deeper than the neck for obvious reasons. And you, know, you need to go very step by step with this. You will see the needle advancing this way. Then you will get a pop here of the fascia in between the two. Then you again advance the needle and then lie either lateral or posterior to the artery. We've come here and we just need to come a little more down, deposit the drug and now the artery has kind of been pushed away and you will see the drug. Mamda just told us that fluid, that is any fluid in the body or blood looks dark, so your drug looks dark. <coughs> These are few of the papers that we had done just to prove ourselves that even in deformed extremities, where you may not get the twitches that you want, the encoder response that you want with the peripheral nerve stimulator, we could very easily get going with this. Once you work more and more with ultrasound, more and more anomalies get revealed to you, such as an abnormally placed artery here and there, or you would, you, you would see at times that the nerve itself isn't right in the muscle, especially in the neck. Well, this is another example of a deformed chest. You can see the spine going for a twist here. And this child came for a radial club hand repair. In children, congenital anomalies come as a bunch. They don't come just alone. There are either some cardiac defects or bony defects or they're together or they will have some renal issues. So most of the time with light sedation and a solid block, we get going. Well, another interesting case. This was a lady who got crashed by a auto rickshaw and she got her cervical spine fractured. That would have healed with time. They didn't need to do much with it, but they wanted to fix her elbow. So this was a, this was a very easy case to do under a block. Coming to axillary block, this is the most distal block, but the architecture of the other three blocks that I have just mentioned is far more surer than this particular block. The radial, the ulna, the median or whichever terminal branches we have would be scattered around the axillary artery here. I will not be able to tell you where exactly is which, but you can yet see the artery very well and then you can, keep, you can just bait the artery with the drug and get your block. Let's see how. To get this block, the probe is kept this way. Once the probe is kept this way, it shows you the following structures. Number one, humerus. Always read the humerus first because bone is always seen very well under ultrasound, although it shows you nothing beyond itself. So it's a friend as well as an enemy. 
Okay, it's an enemy when it comes to spine, but it's a friend when it comes to axillary block. So you see the humerus, you know this is the bone. Around the bone, start searching for the artery. Around the artery, start searching for the nerves. Around the nerves, start searching for the respective muscles. There are only three muscles. One is triceps, biceps, and thoracobrachialis. Having kept the probe like this, what you see is this. Again, as I told you, pick this image, put it there, it's the same. This is the biceps, the coracobrachialis, the musculocutaneous. As I told you, unmistakable structure is the humerus here. This is the small artery. It is an infant, by the way, hence the depth is only two. This is the triceps. And this is the needle that has come all the way and is depositing the drug here. Can you see this? Yeah, I have gone on the 12 o'clock position of the artery. Now this is an infant. Look in an adult. <coughs> the artery is sitting on the triceps here. Looks far bigger. These are the nerves. But I wouldn't really care to understand which is the radial and which is the nerve here. I would just get going with the block. Unless I want to give a chronic pain. Very, very specific block. This is how a drug injection would look around the maxillary artery. And you see the artery being pushed. This is the needle and this is the drug. Appreciate it? I don't get your acknowledgement. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, so this is how it was. When the first sign of an axillary block is other than relief of pain, patient won't be able to lift his hand well. All right, this looked very fine, but it's very painful for him. A couple of glass pieces had gone inside while he was working. So this is how is the this is the essence, I wouldn't call it essence, probably this is just a few facts about upper extremity blocks with ultrasound guidance and yes, solo anatomy and respective schemes for different approaches need to be mastered, the needle placement and then obviously the limitations should be known. So keep scanning again and again unless you are very sure of your scan, but I don't think we should put needles in. So thanks a ton. We have time for the other lecture, upper extremity. What to do? <coughs> this will take another 15 20 minutes maybe. Audience call? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Continue. All right. Now, when it comes to blocks, let me tell you.